Nerdcast! Frost Grave. Look at this brand new edition to season two, version two, whatever you want to call it. Extreme doesn't have one because he thinks all games are stupid now. Um, we'll talk about that. Oh, did it come with that? I autographed it myself. Oh, I thought uh, Joseph McCullough actually wrote your name. <laughs> um, Not this John Sutter. <laughs> that's right. It's a little, little different. I, that's this one here, by the way. Relic Play, another great game. Um, great game. We're going to get into everything about this. Also, the difference between first edition, second edition, all of that. Let's take a moment and tell you who we are. In case you stumbled upon us by typing in Frostgrave second edition review, bing, bong, boom, we pop up, hopefully. Uh, we've got Valdrick. He is in the, I'm not going to point. He is in the uh, turquoise and black. Blue? What is that yeah. color? Blue. Blue and blue. Um, extreme, I won't ask you. Uh, hey, on. That's ableist, is what that is. I'm not going to do the point because you fucked me over, Bjorn, a few videos ago. <laughs> you're like, yep, you got it. You <laughs> said, oh, yep, you're doing great. <laughs> Solid <laughs> bitch. I'm not falling for that. It's a great bit, but it's not going to work again because I watched him. <laughs> I got to put a view on the record. You got a BMW shirt. That's Bjorn. Uh, you may have seen his mug on a motorcycles, uh, not cars. Task Force Geek uh, thing you did on there. Uh, Extreme is the one with the hat. And he has the Zlurpcast TV shirt, which, by the way, you can purchase that at Zlurpcast.net. There's all kinds of designs on there, and then, like, different things that the designs go on. Because that's what you do. Like, how do you make a T-shirt? You find a thing, you find a shirt, you put the thing on the shirt, you have a T-shirt. Nobody wears blank shirts. Mike, is that a blank? No, it's oh, Adepticon. Adepticon. That's how they did. They put one on the titty. And a big one on the back. That's what you do with those. Sometimes you just put a big one on the back and nothing on the front. That's yeah, a no-no. Yeah. That's a no-no. I'm not going to buy that shirt. Did you ever buy a shirt like that? No, it was given to me for free. Yeah. yeah. That was the Dreadball shirt. That's right. Play Yo, green, green. green So you get some stuff for that. Subscribe, like, blah, blah, blah. We got a bunch of videos talking about games that we like, rating them at the end, pros and cons. And we have videos talking about other stuff in the hobby, you know, creating a gaming club, championing a game, running things, all that stuff. So definitely check those out as well. But this one is about Frostgrave. And, you know, before we delve into this game, I got to say, I'm going to give Joseph McCullough and Osprey Games um, a lot of credit for many things. What I think is really cool about this, you know, when people talk about games and they, they talk about things that we always joke on this show about, you like the idea of something more than it. People always talk about campaigns, and we always say, well, is that even a, you know, do you, are you really going to play it? I know you want it. The other one is always about how much fluff. Like, man, I want some background on that. Check this shit out. One page of fluff. One page. Now, there's supplement books, which we'll talk about, and there's scenarios, but it says, this is the setting the game is in. There was a magic city. This wizard fucked up, and now it's all frozen, and now it's thawing out, and there's people that some cl cling on to the magical uh, of, uh, of the past, you know, things that they, the lore of their own world, and is it myth, is it legend, because it's been so long, and then there's crazy beasts walking around. That's it. The rest is up to you. Um, would you guys say this is as much a do-it-yourself kind of miniatures game as there is? Oh yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's, it doesn't have its own, it does have its own set of miniatures, but they're very open about use whatever miniatures make you happy. You know, there's no races. It's, you know, if you want to play an elf wizard, it's a, you, you're a wizard that happens to be an elf or a dwarf or an orc or whatever. It, it, it make there's no stat changes or anything. So very progressive. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I mean, there's obviously a lot of classes of what type of soldier there are. Um, so if you really wanted to make it, an orc war band or an elf war band, you can just easily do that by taking more archers that wear less armor or more dudes with two axes or whatever, or two, two handed weapons and make it like it's such a, a cool do it yourself vibe. And in a weird way, I mean, 
So, Mike, you had a lot of experience with, uh, and obviously, you know, role, role playing games over the years. Is this kind of like, I mean, if you were to say, hey, take a take an average role playing game that doesn't have, you know, that is up to the DM to make it what it is, and put it on the tabletop. That's kind of what this is, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of the more basic role playings I've had, it's like all you know is the city, and you got this. You know, there's a few cities around, and that's it. You know, that's all you need. Yeah, you got Felstad. Am I saying <laughs> that right? Is that what it is? Felstad, the frozen city, or Felstad? Oh, Stad? I don't know. Stad. Stad. Uh, <laughs> so, Frostgrave. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've heard about this game because outside of the the big companies that make tabletop games. This is one, and we mentioned in a previous episode when we were talking about our favorites, it's kind of like, it, it's got a, a <coughs> hipster kind of coolness vibe. Um, Osprey also did Gaslands, uh, Dracula's America. These, these games that have taken on a bit of a life on their own, and almost in a, in a weird way, it's kind of, um, it's like the anti-company kind of game system, where it, it is about how creative can you be, both with your war band, your wizard, in this case of this game, um, and other miniatures in their other games, how creative you can get, what kind of story you want to do. And it's really all about you. And I, I think that, and we're going to talk about the campaign that Mike ran for us a few years back and, and all of that. But what I love about this game is it is, it, it's a big book. I mean, big relatively, but it's, the rules are such a small part of it. Um, it's a lot of spells in here because the game is focused around the wizard. Like you essentially take the role of the wizard. You've got an apprentice. So when you're building your war band, you got, you are, you know, it's free. You buy an apprentice for a hundred gold. You got 300 left, I believe. I think you get 400 to start with. And then you buy soldiers, you know, barbarians, knights, archers, uh, thugs, thieves, whatever. There's like 20 or 25 or so different classes you can buy there. Some of them are free. So that way, if you are short on your war band, you can just add some for free on there. Um, and it's just, the game is pretty basic. I mean, you've got a D20. That's what sets this game apart from a lot of other skirmish games, uh, which that's something that when you're playing this game, and, and Mike, correct me if I get any of this wrong, so whether it's a fighting or shooting or magic, whatever, you roll, you add your stat for whatever that is, fighting, shooting, or magic, your opponent does the same, and then you, you compare the difference. Whoever wins, then you take that number and you minus the or you uh, subtract your opponent's defense, and then there's a, like if you, like a dagger is less damage than a, yeah. a two-handed weapon or whatever, and that's how much damage they take. Which means I could roll a 19, Mike could roll an 18. We're both plus five, and now his and maybe he's got 10 armor on. 24 minus 10, he takes 14 damage. He might be dead. Um, that did I get that sort of right, Mike? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So. This game is such, it's wild. It's just, you don't know what the hell is going to happen. And I love that. Um, and there's something that, in a previous episode, Biron, you said you don't like wizards and characters. You don't like, in general, you're not a big fan of spell casters in any game. Is that still true? Right, because it's a sin to cast spells. Okay. Um, I think they're cool. I think they're fun. And this is a game where they take center stage. This is something that the basic game your soldiers don't even really have names or never advance. You might use some house rules to make them mean something. But, you know, I think back to the campaign, I, I would have you give an overview, Mike, as well. But um, you had some rules you found online and you did some massaging of those rules as well to make the soldiers uh, mean a little more. But I think back after reading this new edition, it's like it would have been fine as is. You know, yeah. would you agree? Yeah, it was more trouble than it was worth, really. Because, like, you know, if you want your hero to advance, you can just, you know, upgrade the hero and just say he got better, you know? Yeah. It's, <laughs> and the wizard is gaining new spells within their school, and the apprentice can cast the same ones. They're at a minus two to everything. That's another cool thing. You don't have to keep track. You can keep track of one character. Again, base, basic rules of the game and basic campaigns. Keep track of the one character. The apprentice just knows all your shit, minus two to do everything. Huh, that's easy enough. But your soldiers are replaceable. They are, as I was looking at my miniatures now, I was looking at my um, Warhammer Underworlds models, for example. I've got these skeletons. There's, you know, obviously ones with uh, two anti weapons, one anti weapon and shield. And then you add a necromancer, like, that's a warband. You know, if you want to throw a couple of ghouls in there to have a thematic couple of thieves, you can do that. Um, I looked at my beastmen. 
And it's like, okay, I've got the mage. There's obviously the, the wizard. I've got a really big, tough beast man. He's probably barbarian, or maybe I'll put him in as a knight or a Templar or something. But that's part of the fun of this game is looking at your collection or looking online or at a store for a new collection you may want to buy and saying, how can I make that fit into this? And um, did you guys, Biron and Valdrick, when we played our campaign, was that kind of half the fun for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. I would get a figure I'd like and then a wizard figure and then try to figure out what school of magic that looked the most like and then put yeah. it in there. So, And I liked kit batching the, the, the frost gray minis with the, a lot of the historicals and whatnot. So Yeah, that's a great, great pairing there. Frostgrave has um, the cultists. They have like sort of not Vikings type guys. Well, got, yeah, soldiers. And then there are soldiers too, which are the females. Right. Uh, there's barbarians. There's uh, two wizard packs or, or, male or something. What? Yeah, the, the wizard packs. So, you know, we're always, because the wizard is the centerpiece of your army. So you usually default to, I want something kind of fancy, something that looks a little more special than the regular dudes. So you look to either like, you know, GW or even like the Reaper line or well, all these different things out there. But now you can kit bash a wizard or an apprentice from the sprue too. Oh yeah. Yeah, you don't want to use the metal wizard miniatures if they that were branded for Frostgrave because they're kind of mm. Yeah, that's probably my only when we get to the pros and cons, probably my only con is the miniatures, but it's such a small one because who cares? But the box, the plastic box stuff is great. Oh, right, yeah. right. I, I meant the, the blisters of those yeah, metal. Yeah. yeah, the plastics are great. Um, kit bash within or with other things, historicals, or anything else you got out there. I actually I, used, for my soldiers, I used um, D&D pre-painted miniatures. That's right. how, you know I got because, hey, I had them, and I had literally every type more than representative. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, nothing wrong with that. There's th those bits, too. I've been using the, the, the pointy uh, 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 hood guys for a lot of different Plenty of good guys. Mm -hmm. The cultists. Cultists. Oh. You can say cultists. You can't say what you're thinking, Duran. And if you leave them prime to white, that doesn't count either for anything. <laughs> I was calling them traffic cone heads. What? There you go. Make them orange. Uh, so I, I kind of gave a very quick version of the basics of the game, but it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you have these stat lines that, you know, movement is how far. Uh, your fight, your shoot, and your magic, your armor. Then you just tack on weapons. It's a lot of it's based on their class uh, from there. And the wizard learns spells. Now, a big part of this book, there's a lot of spells. Um, and something that, uh, you know, I believe we had a question online. I actually, like, looked up, hey, who wants to ask questions about what we're going to cover? And I got one normal response. That's cool. Usually I get, like, you know, fuck you, whatever. Uh, Tom that's Ross. All, that's all me saying that. Though. It is you. Tom Ross said, I want to know if it's worth it to buy the second edition. What are the big changes? We'll talk about that. But when you look at these spells, I, we all like cards. Who doesn't like cards? So these are essentially cards you can print off, slide in sleeves with other cards, or print on big... But like perhaps some, I don't know, dead zone cards? Yeah, the back that's scumbag cards, whatever. Yeah, um, I still wanted them to group the spells by the, the school and not alphabetical. That was a, but I, it's fine. I mean, once you have the cards, you're, you're fine too. We printed these out, I think, last time we, we played, Mike, and had those. Yeah. But it gives you what you need. It gives you what school falls under, and then sort of the requirement. You need line of sight. Is it for you? Is it for someone else? All that kind of stuff. Something that uh, the game designer, Joseph McCullough, did in this one compared to the first one, he saw that a good chunk of the spells from the first edition weren't being used. I think there's like 80 spells. He's, he said like 20 weren't being used. I think it's probably more like half weren't being used. And he wanted to make all of them usable. So if you have the first edition and you buy this one, I, that'd be the first thing I do is go to the spells that you would pick for your warband, part of that, uh, that school of magic, and then just see how they improve the quote shitty spells and made them good in there. That was the biggest change. Um, outside of that, they, there were, 10 scenarios i believe in the first book now there's 20 so i think he kept the first 10 so those are the ones to start from there's a d20 chart i would probably recommend you go in order because i think it probably gets higher up in complexity but i, I didn't look at everyone like that but i would imagine it does <clears> it reminds me of um when i used to play dungeons and dragons uh there was a dragon mag magazine release that said finally good bar bard spells no they were still shitty 
Well, I mean, if you're playing a bard, you it shows that for a reason. I mean, right. you got to be funny, right? Want to be the as a goof. Yeah, as a goof. That's as why. Goof. Well, uh, I always I, did bard and then multi-class to barbarian to make a bard variant. A barbarian. That's good. <laughs> you didn't create that. I did. Up, did you? I did. Yes. I don't. I God, don't. God can confirm. I don't think you did. If anyone's watching now and wants to confirm who created barbarian. So you got this list here. These are the basic soldiers you add to your warband. You could have unlimited amount of those, up to 10 total in the warband, but here are the specialists. You can only have four of them. So based on the cost, you're probably gonna have like one or two of these, a couple of decent ones here and a couple of free ones there. You take your wizard, take your apprentice, and that's 400. And then as you build up, you can add more, you know, get rid of people or start off small. You might want to do something where everybody starts off small. I think this is, I don't remember, Mike, do you remember in this game when we played our campaign? I know it's not a, like a numbers game because you only have 10 total, but did you see, was there a big difference if you had, if you were outnumbering your opponent or not really? A little bit. I mean, you could, you could, uh, on the treasure gathering ones, you could make the, the, the one, because the problem is when you get treasure, you're, you only get one action and you're encumbered. And, or, I don't know if the one action is true or not, but uh, it, it slows you down. Right, you, you can't, can't use you can't weapons. You can't use, you can't use arc bows. That's what I'm thinking of. You can't use metal weapons, bows, or shields, uh, or staves. So you, if you have more numbers, especially the the crappy ones, they're the thieves and whatnot. They're the ones picking up the treasure and taking them off, while the fighters are kind of protecting them. So yeah, if you I just remember have elite fighters. Then it's gonna. We were, we were doing a lot, I don't know if you were doing this in your games, but I remember I was doing a lot of like uh, buddy system. You yeah, know, was yeah. Two at a time going everywhere. Yeah. Um, because you have one that's going to get the treasure. That's a big part of this game, by the way, is um, getting treasure, taking it off the board. Uh, getting treasure and they don't want to kind of watch their back as they're sl slowly dragging that off the table there. Um, but there's also like a lot of cool stuff. Something I remember in this game was uh, using my wizard to push people away from treasure or push my guys closer. Uh, when you win a fight, you can push you or your opponent an inch. So there's a lot of um, maneuvering that happens in this game, both in the movement phase, obviously, in the fighting phase, or not phase, sorry. So we'll talk about phases, the, or the fighting, and then doing magic as well. So there's a lot of maneuvering, great. Always trying to get by those treasure chests or whatever other objectives are out there. Um, in this game, uh, I think it's, pretty simple as far as the phases it's like a power up kind of phase do all the stuff phase and then a cleanup phase and that's kind of it and you it's a new round and the cool thing is when it comes to activations a lot of people prefer these uh, alternate activation games now um, i think most of us here prefer that in games right yes. yeah yeah because you don't have that well i'm gonna go on my phone i'm gonna go take a piss you got your you turn take a dump right if it's blood bowl take a dump uh, and if Biron's playing, take two. Mm -hmm. uh, in this game, I think it's uh, back and forth, but when you activate your wizard, because they go first, you can activate three extra, or is it two extra, I think? Yeah, up to three, if they're within a bubble of three inches. Yeah, yeah so you got a wizard in their bubble, then you get, so activate a group there. And then, and well, we're not on that. I know what you're doing. You're trying to be funny. Great. You're trying to be funny. You want to be serious, Biron, or you want to be funny guy? Funny guy. Be... Okay. We're going to get to that. Okay. Keep a thumb in that page and one in your butt at the same time. Then you have the apprentice. He goes with his bubble, and then you go to the warrior, the soldiers. And I think at that point, it's not alternate anymore, Mike, right? Isn't it like so if I won the initiative, it's my wizard in, in the bubble, then your wizard, you're the bubble, yeah. apprentice in the bubble, yours in the bubble, and then all my soldiers? soldiers? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So it's alternating to an extent. And I actually like that because I think for the most part, we didn't, I mean, when we played, I don't remember not having at least one friend near your wizard or apprentice, somebody to keep an eye on them and either yeah. get buffed from them or to help like protect them, something. Um, but that was- You wanted at least one bodyguard for sure. Yeah, you definitely yeah. want that for sure. Um, but there's, it's just it, like, it's very much a kind of do your own thing there. There's a bunch of scenarios. Now there's, like I said, there's 20 of them in there. 
but you can make your own. Have your group make them. I think multiplayer could work decent. It's still obviously best one-on-one. -on -one. Um, one thing I loved when reading this one, and I don't remember this in the first edition. There, it probably is in there too, but so every time I saw a, um, a little bubble, like a brown bubble with rules, most of them are an optional rule. Every single one I saw, I'm like, yep, yeah, got to use that. Got to use that. Gotta. <laughs> and no point that I see is this. So this is not. Some of them are just like a, um, a summary, but a lot of them are optional rules. Here, well, critical hits. This is yeah. one that everybody will be familiar, familiar with. It's like, oh, yeah, we roll 20, get a crit, even if the modifiers uh, make you not win. Um, every single time I saw optional rule, I'm like, yeah, you got to use that. Um, it just it adds, it adds more to the game more things to keep track of, but you can tell it's very much like a, yeah, why wouldn't we use that shit? Um, there's just a lot of fun stuff to do in there. And this is a game where it's, like I said, it's very do it yourself. So you're gonna have to rely on the people you're playing with, your friends, your people at the store you play with, or your, your club. Um, it's got a lot of that in it. It's, got, it's, it's not the, what is the 40K standard tournament rules we're using it's it's like what what are we using because this is very much a you know either somebody's in charge or there's a consensus and we've all decided we're doing these from this but that's would you guys say that's a lot of skirmish games at this point anyway yeah especially these uh smaller market ones they they do tend to have that like you almost that hipster quality of do what you want you know because mm -hmm. that's what's going to sell is because there's you know, there's the group of people that want, you know, the GW that want to do what they do. And then there's the group that's like, oh, I don't want to do that. But, so this gives me more freedom to do what I want. So, yeah, uh, this is probably a game where another one of those where when you see someone asking about it, either in a at a store, on a Facebook group, forum, whatever, do you have that feeling of, oh, yeah, this guy's cool. Like, yeah. they're playing Frostgrave. Of course he's cool. Do you guys have that with this? Imp guard, nice, nice. <laughs> Unpainted, nice. It is the bespoke game of skirmish combat. Do you like that, Biron? I think you. No, no, that's the okay. downside for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, let, let's. I think we can probably um, slide into pros and cons. What What about this game, Biron? Because I don't think you played it when we had our campaign. Because it was the next thing. It was the next thing we did. Uh, I believe it was a uh, Defcon acquired mostly for most of us, right? Uh, uh, they had it at the I think I waited for Mike to tell me about it. I probably either I probably bought it, it was probably online because I didn't have a store at the time. Um, I don't think I really knew much about it. I because I didn't know the Osprey games then. Um, this was came out in 2015, I believe. So yeah. five years later, we got a new edition. Um, and hopefully we answer the question, by the way, real quick to Tom. I mean, it's uh, fix the spells, the, the shitty ones, more scenarios, cleaned up some of the rules, combat, building war bands, cleaned up some of the campaign rules. You don't have to create your own shit. You could go right out of the book for all the campaign stuff. So that's it. Do you have to buy the new one? No, you don't have to buy the new one. But it's like 25 bucks, 30 bucks, and it helps support an awesome company. So why wouldn't you? Uh, Biron, back to you. So... When we played, what, how, what were you feeling during it? Were you into it? Uh, one thing I liked is even if you had a shitty game, like the dice didn't no, go your way, you usually got something out of it. You usually got a level or something to do post-game, you know, in the cleanup phase. Like, oh, my wizard gets some new spells. This is that. Even though I played shitty or dice went against me. So I really like that aspect. He learned a new spell. He lost one of his balls. Yeah. It's kind of like... You know, because you got injured. Wizards got injured a lot too. We had we we did a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, there's apothecaries you can hire as well, and things like that. So so you're right. You got something out of it. Uh, but I don't think the games we played either. You know, you and I, you and Mike, you and Ryan, whoever else we had in there. Um, you didn't really have any of those kind of. There was no rage quit. There was no table flip. There was you. I mean, you were uh, relatively in check. So you still had fun for the most part, right? Yeah, but it's. I mean, it's not on my top list of, but just because again it's the theme the theming where it's all centered on wizards yeah and i'm not a wizard guy yeah but i think we mentioned this in another game where it's like if they if they expanded it to be like you're a elite ranger and this is your war band or you're a knight of 
great power, yeah. Rangers. That's, that's this game right here. So, But if they could combine it to form Voltron of games. Now, uh, Mike, did you buy all the expansions or no? Uh, I believe I got most of them. Okay. I, I was actually – I was looking for all my stuff, and it got – spread out but i i because that 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 last one kind of snuck in so the i think there was three of them or whatever yeah i think there was three um wasn't there an undead pirate one before there was no that's a different game altogether oh. um i think there get were any eight of them. total how many there were eight total oh geez wow okay um i didn't and, get uh, a, a few other like i got all the pdfs that they released for, you know uh because they come out for like two bucks yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, well, sure, a few bucks. You know? Cool. So in the, the kind of designer notes at the beginning, he talks about the big changes. The other one was he wanted to make sure you could still use all those. There's yeah. like a very tiny section in the back that says, here's a couple things that got to get tweaked if you have the expansions. It's not like you'd expect. It's not like a, a GW thing where there's a 12-page errata to make something still usable. It's, you know, it's, they're all still usable. It's the same game. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, I think, Biron, you probably would like their other games because – did you guys do a Dracula's America campaign? We did. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to have an episode on that, but, I mean, that's obviously – your leader could be whoever you want it to be. It could be a gunfighter. It could be a hand-to-hand -hand guy. Whatever you want. So this is a game where if you don't like Wizards, you probably aren't going to be a huge fan of this game. I think it, I also picked the wizard I shouldn't have, the school of magic I shouldn't have. What was it? I, I forgot. I'm going to, just because I think it'll be fun, I'm going to make Mike try to recite as many as he can right now. The schools? Yeah. I should have done the, what is it, Pyromancer, the direct damage guy? Well, you, you just gave him one. Yeah. Real nice, Spiron. That's an elementalist. Oh, boy. Elementalist, yes. That's a, um, yeah. I should have picked that. The summoners, there's the uh, chronomancers, the sigilist, that was mine, uh, <laughs> the witch. I would do the witch, and my character name would be Feruza Bulk. It's a good one. From the craft? Yeah. <laughs> or Waterboy. Oh, yeah, Waterboy. Or American History X. What I just, so crazy that you just talked about that. Just yesterday, someone, um, this guy I follow, was mentioned he's watching the craft for the first time. And everyone was like giving him shit and blah, blah, blah. Someone mentioned the soundtrack. And I'm like, I got to look that one up because it it's, it's all covers, I think. I, I remember liking it. Yeah. So um, you got a good amount of them, Mike. I think, yeah. there's a, I think there's a lot more, though. Yeah, there is. There's uh oh, Thermo Thermo when I was re when I did the book, I didn't actually look at the spells because I'm just like it's like this much of it. And <laughs> well, I think it's the reason why I bring it up here, not not to put Mike on the spot, but more just to um, there's you could do a campaign, which I think this would be a cool way to do it, where we all pick a different one or a draft or whatever, if, you, if there's ones that people really want it to. And then that's the theme of your warband. So that way you know you're only going to have one Chronomancer, which is probably time, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, Illusionist, which was mine from the campaign, um, where my, my guy was just like a shitty magician. He was like a hack magician that had everyone fooled. You're um, David Blaine. There, yeah. No, a hack. Oh, He's phenomenal. Sorry. He's probably in a block of ice right now. <laughs> waiting for someone to get him out. Uh, Elementalist, which is really cool because obviously that's kind of cool. You can bring in some cool shit. Um, Enchanter, uh, Sigilist. I mean, there's just uh, Thermaturge. What's that one? Is that temperature? Healing. Oh, healing. The only um, reason I recognize them is because I, I think they're all schools of magic in the Final Fantasy games. They, they, they're very much... Um, very. It's for, it's for wizard fetishist is what this game's for. Yeah, because they're all... They're, it's got everyone covered. I'm so, a sigilist. Well, I think it's cool too because we mentioned earlier about the do build your own warband, and so I think it's cool that while there is a bestiary or bestiary, bestiary, bestiary. Okay, or but it's best. Right. It's best, like a bestigor. But you can also say bestiary too. So bestiary. That sounds like a infection. Well, if, if that sounds like a, some of the weirdos in the UK would say. Yeah, say, not from America. <laughs> so um, we talked about it earlier, but you can make a themed war band. So I like that there is a bestiary where you have undead in there, but I could also do an undead war band because a necromancer is one of these schools of magic. So I can, there's no reason why, you know, like, hey, you're, shouldn't your guy have a rule where he's like, not dead? Like, ah, 
Nobody yeah. gives a fuck about that. Here are my stats. A skeleton warrior with a sword and shield is the same as a human with a sword and shield. Who gives a fuck? Um, I love that because you can do whatever you want in this game. It's like a modeler's dream, a painter's dream. Um, and you can, if you want to do it on the cheap, you can do it on the cheap. If you want to buy really nice stuff, you can do that too. Um, it's, um, it's both a low point of entry. All you need is a book and some models and tape measure, I guess, and, and a pencil, a number two pencil. <laughs> um, it's the low point of entry, but also on the flip side, a, a little bit of higher difficulty of entry, which we talked about in a previous episode of, you might not see this game on the shelf at your store. It's a book, so you got to go to the book section. You're not going to see it next to, you know, bat, Orc Battle Wagon. You're going to have to go to the book section to see it, but that's where it is. Um, that's that's kind of part of the, the pros and the cons at the same time. And Beer and I don't, I don't want to, I know we strayed away from what you were saying there. So what, what are the things you like about this game? I like the hobby aspect I like, even though I didn't really participate because I just used pre-painted stuff. Um, I like the idea of shopping for a model and just like, here's a cool fighter model. I have an excuse to buy and paint it now. Yeah. Um, True. If you ever backed like weird Kickstarters. Yeah, I try not to. I want it because I want it. Like, yeah. like, there's a reason to use it. He doesn't yeah. have to be a Is whatever. it on a three by three, Mike? Yeah. Pre uh, yeah. So that's another plus. I'm a big fan of three by three or smaller game boards. Uh, yeah, three by three is a great, a great size um, because it's big enough to do skirmish games that have a lot of models. Mm -hmm. But it also gives you room to put a bunch of scenery out there and just have fun with it. Um, I, two by two is fun. Or two by two is fun as well, yeah. but it's very restrictive. Frostgrave, I mean, you can, you know, it gives you space to spread out those treasures. You can have a big building in the middle to fight over with a bunch of shit in there, or you can have things all spread out. Um, it's, it's wide enough to do all of that. And when you're doing your actions, I believe you can do a double move or it's like a move and a half, I think. Move and a half, yeah. Move and a half. So, I mean, you can get where you need to go relatively quickly on the board. You're not really that hampered. Thieves and uh, hounds and whatnot can have higher movement to help you out there. Well, and like you said, I like, I like some of the wizard's ability to move guys around. So it's like, can I get there in one turn? Yes, if my wizard goes first, I'm going to move my guy this much. And then when he activates, he can do move, move. Yeah. So it's like, it opens up the board a little bit. Uh, three by three, I like because I like to play on a six by four and have room for all my paperwork. Yeah, that's the problem yeah. with the big battle games. You ain't got no yeah. room for your paperwork. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you're looking for an eight foot table. Yep. And you, you need your storage. You need your um, plop bag, if you will. Like, yep. You know, here's here's how it works. You can go into the game store. You know, over the shoulder bag. You know, you got your battle foam. You got a go. backpack. Right. Walk in. I'm gonna go buy some shit. Yep. I'm gonna look around. I'm gonna take a piss. You plop your stuff down, and then you finally, eventually, play the game. And you say, "Oh, I won the roll. What side do I want?" Well, my shit's already here. Yep. So, with all, all the high terrains on my side of the board, that just happens sometimes. My favorite is any game you roll off for like a, not maybe not first turn, but like choosing sides and like to tie, to tie, to tie. Finally, get yeah. Well, I'm just gonna stay here. My shit's here. Like, we've already rolled the dice so many times. You could have just. Here's the thing. If you're playing against a normie or some weirdo that you don't know, and they go, uh, I want that side. Do you get up and leave? <laughs> I do. Like he says, I want that side. You're like, my side's in the car. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta go. I, gotta go. I just go, good yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think whenever I set up tables, um, this is just, this is for all, all tabletop miniature games. I am very much a, like a symmetrical yes. person, yes. but I usually do it diagonal. So yeah. it's so tower here, tower diagonal across. Hill here, hill here. If there's well, not a big building, plop it in the center. Right. There's one weird thing that goes in the middle. Or if we have two weird things, we each get one. I just I've always done that at, for 20 plus years. And I know it's probably it it takes away some of the storytelling of a certain scenario, but I'd rather let the terrain be what it is and then add in our shit afterwards. You know, you know, if I want to put the the one big treasure in something on your side, because and you, you we or we rolled off and you won, you want to put it there. That's cool. But for some reason, I like having the terrain as like a, not a variable, as a constant. You know, I don't know. Do you guys have that too? Yeah, usually. 
Yeah. I don't know why. It's just maybe because we know we're going to plop. Yeah. We know we're not going to go, mm, like, get down there. Oh, it's a little little wall there. And if someone else sets up the terrain and they set up on their side with all this advantageous high ground or whatever, it's like, are, are you okay with this? I'm like, yeah, because now if I lose, I can blame it on the terrain. Sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, blame it on the terrain. I, it's, I almost, usually those, I usually say, look, well, why don't we just put it all in the middle? Like, if they're going to do that, I'll usually try to do the old, let's alternate. Because um, that's the old, the other way that we used yeah. to do stuff is the alternating. That's how you can feel out an opponent that you don't know. If, if you start to notice the way they're placing terrain, like. like I got to go. That's, that's when you pick up your phone, like, sorry, emergency. That or as soon as they start to do it, then I'm going to, like, I'm going to do that. And hopefully, grab, there's, hopefully there's another big thing there. Put it in mind. Because at that point, it's like, whatever. The game's a bullshit game anyway. Yes. So you, you're already deciding that terrain's going to be a big part of your army. So fuck it. I'll try to do it too. And I'm putting oh, down my tide wall. Yeah. My rip tides okay. and tide wall. And devastators, devastators on level 12 against each other. Like, why? Like, you can't get them in close combat. There's not enough room up there. How they get up there? <laughs> so Frost Raider doesn't really have a lot of that. It's... It's for the most part, I mean, you can design a scenario that's, that's 3D, but it's a, for the most part, 2D. <coughs> game. Um, I don't, I mean, again, it's, there's climbing in there. There's swimming in there, too, if you want to yeah. be going, go in the water. Um, it should all be frozen, but it's thawing out, slowly that's thawing. That's yeah. yeah. Or maybe your wizard, uh, you know, made it, you know, it was, it was 20 degrees, and he's like, now he's making it a little warmer. It's a bit of a hot tub now. And for our UK listeners, he said 20 degrees as in Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah. That's also Fahrenheit. Good. We still do that. Uh, so, Biron, uh, anything else, pros and cons for you on this one? Uh, I, l- I like the idea of the game where it, it, this is kind of a common Osprey thing of bring your own shit. We'll provide a framework. Um, the downside is it, this is the most NPR of games that I've played, where okay. I imagine people who played have a tote bag with their rules in it. We gotta protect the book. Yeah. So I don't like when I see people playing it. I'm like, I probably don't want to hang out with those guys unless I already know them. Like I know Mike and all those. Do you see a Frostgrave player as a? Uh, I don't want to use the L word that ends in a D that rhymes with jib jibfard. <laughs> but not as what? much as a board gamer now. Okay. So is you have to embrace capitalism a little bit if you get into a miniature war game. That's the guy who bought shitty pre-painted D&D models. Well, no, I bought them many, many years ago. I just had them. Oh, so that's even cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I did buy them from Todd at Crooked Hat Games. Okay. <laughs> I mean, usually you flaunt your wallets. This is a game where you didn't do that. Yeah. So, yeah. You could have. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, the, I really like those cultists and the warriors and stuff like that, but what am I going to do with 20 of the same looking dude in this game? What do you mean? Because isn't the box of cultists, you get, what, 20 cultists? Uh, yeah, whatever. 10, You're not going to make an army of 20 guys in this. I mean, Oh, you mean the extras? Like, what I see that, yeah, what I see it be good for is, all right, we're doing a campaign. I'll buy this box, you buy this box, swap around. Back. I think yeah. if you had a, a group of cool people to play with, here's what I would do. I, Which I we don't. Like, or, or don't. <laughs> you, 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 you don't. Um, I would treat it like a... Um, like a, a, a get together where you decide on what you're going to do in the game, but let's all just throw a bunch of fucking sprues on a table and let's just sit around. I'll be uh, night. Biron calls it soggy biscuit. I call it grab a sprue. Let me get that. Oh, let me get that one. Ooh, ooh, let me, let me get one of those. And it's just, you can make some cool guys because there's no reason why you, you can't mix and match anything you think is cool in here. It's the rule of cool, first and foremost. Um, you can paint things to match if you want to have a, you know, a uniform, but you don't even really have to do that. I mean, you can, you know, they come across people all the time. Uh, but it's a very much a kit bashing kind of game. You can make a, make a date night out of it, Biron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just saying. So, all right. Let's, uh, I'm going to go to Extreme. Extreme, what, uh, Frostgrave, you've been quiet this episode. I don't think you've really played this game. Is that true? I have played um, a couple games. I've okay. read a lot more about this game than I've played. Okay. Uh, some of my pros, I really, really like the setting. 
I think it's a unique setting for, you know, they could have just gone standard fantasy, but instead they made like this frozen city. I really like that. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they, like, I, I mean, I joked earlier it was one page of fluff, but that wasn't the disc. It was, it was, they went with the frozen and now the previous magic city is a myth. And so people don't really know much about it. So they, while it may lack several pages of fluff it doesn't mean the setting the setting is fantastic so glad you brought that up so how, yeah. i'm not that's familiar does this how similar is this to say a more time as far as the framework of a single city where all this takes place in hunting for magical crap mike uh you just said it they're both <laughs> the setting but yeah but again Mordheim was when you get down to it Mordheim was pretty setting light too it was there's mm. a city big comet hit it craziness happened and oh, spoilers i didn't read that part yet <laughs> i didn't know a comet hit fucking more time i just thought it was in 1999 so yeah oh, okay I, I, I just thought they, they didn't take care of their buildings and they just you know, <laughs> disintegrated all right extreme uh one of the other things that i really like that i think is probably a con for some people the fact that it's all centered around your wizard and your wizard's the only one that gets better I think that's really cool because it adds like um, your own role playing element where you can be the wizard and the rest of the guys are just kind of peons around you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super cool just being able to focus on one guy. That's the guy that's going to advance. That's the guy I need to make sure he's alive and he happens to be the best one out there as well. Cool. So I think that's really cool. And then it's the other fun. thing, that, my other pro that is a con for negative people is the D20 and the big swings of the D20. Yeah. Uh, I think you. You read that at first and it sounds crazy and there is craziness that happens, but I think it's a lot of fun and I really like that. Extreme, I loved your pros and cons. That was the greatest set of pros and cons I could expect from you. I didn't do my cons. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, wait, I was taking a piss. I'll fix that in post. <laughs> I'll fix it in post. Pachow, here's me taking a piss. Pachow. Uh, Extreme, what are your cons? Or do you have more pros? Mm -hmm. I have a lot more pros than cons, but I do oh, have a couple I, cons. Fucking spill it, man. All right. So one of the cons, I think this is a game where you have to have someone championing this game for you. Um, it's not a game where you're going to go in and find a Frostgrave group very often. Um, you're going to have to have someone that does the work for you. And, and if you do, little... they're going to be a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you this, Extreme. Do you think – so there's two scenarios. There is either – I thought there were 20. There are 20. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, you decide you are going to start up Frostgrave or convince a friend to do it, and you have a group that plays this game. Or, like Biron said, the weirdos. Like, you somehow hear something. You're, you're looking at you're on, you look at the pegs here, like, oh, oh Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. And then... You hear a special frostbite campaign. You weasel your way in, in there. Um, you don't know what to expect because this game is not a straight off the shelf game. So what's more appealing to you, Extreme? Doing the work to create a group to do it, knowing you're gonna have to do everything, or hoping that these people aren't weird. Um, the more appealing is to do it yourself, but I would put a third scenario in there, which I think is the most common. Uh, you go to the game's stores facebook page and there's always one person every couple months hey you guys play frostgrave but no one ever fucking does it's just this random guy that'll pop up hey you guys play frostgrave but that's not the person that's going to champion the game they just want someone else to do it for them. that's true i remember um i forgot what game i was I, I don't know if it was me demoing or somebody else demoing it but i remember people afterwards saying yeah i didn't see anyone playing that game so i didn't go check out the demo Meanwhile, we weren't demoing it because no one showed up to play the demo. Like I had, like, I don't remember if it was me or Mike or somebody. I don't even remember this. I just remember that, that I don't remember the, the characters involved. I don't remember the setting. I just remember there was a game that we were supposed to demo. And then afterwards, like the day later, yeah, I didn't go. I didn't see anyone playing it. Well, but no one showed up to ask to play it. Yeah, well, no one was playing. I went into the store and nobody was playing it. It was on first. Right. It was totally that. And it reminds me of Extreme, the, the guy that every, you know, pops up. Anyone playing this game? Man, I love to get some frost gravy, man. If, anyone, if anyone's playing, here's my, here's my numbers. Just let me know. Let me know. As opposed to, I would like to start this. 
who's interested? Um, so kind of going along with that, another con is the number of books that there were with all the different um, extra books and stuff. I hate when games have all these books because then you have to decide which rules you're using, which ones you aren't. But if you have someone championing it and they can tell you, hey, we're using this book and this book, then you're fine. Everything's good. But if you join a group of weirdos, you have to find out, okay, which books are we using? Which books aren't we are? Oh, there's this PDF online. Are we using that? Yeah, you're right. I hate that. I like yeah, all my rules in one place. That's a, I think that's, that's part, part and parcel, though. Um, I remember back in the day, they used to describe uh, massive multiplayer games like, you know, World of Warcraft as either theme parks, which World of Warcraft, or sandbox, which are open-ended. And this is very much a sandbox style game where you create your own fun, you create your own rules. So it does require that extra effort. And the, the ground rule, you yeah. still need to lay down those guardrails and say, we're playing Frostgrave, including <coughs> both X and Y, and these special optional rules. Yeah. yeah and and I, I see it as a small con. I'm not saying it's like a big deal breaker. It it's is just a small another con. hurdle to go over. Um, and then the last con I have is that if you're really getting into the theme of everything, you have to have pretty specific terrain because you have to have a snow covered frozen city. Um, and that's not always available at game stores and stuff. You almost have to create your own terrain um, unless you just kind of. You know, cheat that and just go with normal stones and things. Uh, to be fair, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the, the city thawing out at this point? Yeah, but it's still frozen. I mean, there's still snow and stuff. Okay. I, what if our campaign was on the, that, the other part, the other side of town, okay? Um, it's a little sunnier over there. The okay. south side of Frostgrave. The south side. I fair point, is terrain. You you probably should have some snowiness to your terrain. Um, like you want to see some unpainted dead zone sci-fi terrain right in the middle, <laughs> with some bullet holes in it, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Spell bullets. Yeah, fair point. You're you're right. They're probably. I bet you you could probably though put a winter three by three mat out, a snow mat, and then put your building on top of it and be okay yeah i got one too show off uh we call that a smat a what a smat what is that it's a snowman Who, who's we is this after i leave the, the, the your gaming group this is the stuff you come up with yes afterwards? it's the best we could do oh my god <laughs> this is rough i'll send you some notes okay. um, so Extreme, would that be, would that suffice? Do you got a, a couple of rundown buildings on top of a smat? Is that cool? Or do you still should be more snow on the buildings? I mean, I, I would like a little more snow. I know just because I like the setting so much, I would want more snow myself. Would you, would you but leave it off if you got no, there and there's one not, building without snow no, on it? No, on that it, question though. So if we go to your, the other scenario, not the guy asking, because that, that's, you know, that's you wanting to hate this guy for not doing it. He talks a good game, but he's never going to do the work. Fuck that guy. The other scenario, you're joining a group that's playing it. They're doing all the work. Buy the main book. We're going to go straight main book. You don't need anything else. Um, and it's, you know, we're going to, after, the, after every game, we're going to make sure everybody, you know, levels up. We get all on the same page, all that kind of stuff. Then you show up to play, and it's terrain that doesn't impress you. Deal breaker? Uh, it's only a deal breaker if it's like sci-fi terrain or like a jungle theme or something. That would be a deal breaker. If it's soup, just like soup normal can under a blanket. In the hills, uh, like a speed stick. Speed stick uh, land speeder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's Ironically, we all reference the speed stick from from that, but yet the people who play that game don't use it, which yeah. is weird. Uh, <laughs> well, because they use it for their vehicles, not for their under arms. Do you think they like... You don't think they you think like they that is like, a full stick of speed stick. It's not been used. Or they went to like the garbage can. Like, let's get rid of all this. <laughs> what is this stuff? Fucking stinky ass Arctic breeze or whatever. Like, I'm gonna eat the popsicle, then use the popsicle, popsicle stick to make my thing. I'm not gonna buy them. That's a very grognard reference at this point, isn't it? <laughs> We're talking. What year did, was that? Even like 1984, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's in the lore. 
So you're before. right. That was a really old white dwarf. But then there was a still old but newer where they went back and said, let's have um, like a create your own vehicle rules. And I swear they grabbed that same picture of the fucking Eldar speeder that was a speed speeder stick, if you will. It's the equivalent of the garbage you saw in Kings of War events with people buying dinosaurs from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, like you go to that, like the fucking rubber section. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like, get a pack of old time candy and some rubber dinosaurs. Yeah, there's like it's like a bin. And you're like, oh, I got a snake. Like, what can I do with this snake? I'm like, well, it's a um, you know defense four dwarf um, glued on this base. What's the defense on your guys? Uh, six? No, it's not. <laughs> it's on everybody. All my guys have six defense. Like, fuck you. You don't. Uh, all right, extreme. So overall, though. Um, you would dig this game if there were some people you'd, you'd be able to play with. But it requires the cool, the, the vetting process, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a really awesome game. I have a lot more pros than cons. Okay. Maybe, um, you know, I know you're uh, going to be moving soon. Maybe set up a little uh, Frostgrave room, possibly, in the new place. Um, I would also need friends. So, oh. you, know. you know, I was... I was watching the episode of The Office the other day where Michael Scott was on the, chil the children's show. He brought a tape in and they were like, here's my part, here's my part. And it's like, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? It's like, I want to be married and have a hundred kids. So I have a hundred friends and no one can say no to being my friend. And then like zoomed in on him and everyone's like, oh shit. And Brian got <laughs> Alex. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> do you think like, would you maybe visit your son at college and say, who wants to play a game, kids? Hello, fellow kids. Yeah. So, like, who's the old dude? That's <laughs> my dad. You give him a big hug and a kiss in front of his friends in the dorms? Every <laughs> time. The, the COVID procedures uh, gets lots of nasty looks. <laughs> you know, people used to always say they had Blood Bowl leagues in, in college and all that kind of stuff, and that's how they play so much. Would Frostgrave be a fun game if, like, you were – playing tabletop games at college because you're going to have a group already playing there? It would be cool. I think the issue you'd run into is terrain again because college kids don't usually have a lot of storage space. Yeah. They'll say, let's, we'll play this frost grave, but let's take away the models. Like, oh, you mean D&D. &D. Okay. We'll, just... <laughs> we'll, use, we'll use chits. <laughs> we'll use a chit the size of a model. Uh -huh. um, like, you know, put glue them all together. So, Extreme, anything else you want to cover on this one? Nope. Okay. Let's go to the one and only, the one they call Valdric. By the way, uh, ask your doctor if Valdric is right for you. It should clear up within three to five days. You put, yeah. put the ointment right on there of, of that Valdric. They cause anal fissures. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds well, amazing. covered most of the pros and cons. So, again, the D20 can go either way. I know some people, <laughs> Todd, I uh, hate the swinginess of it, you know, but I, well, I, I, I if you hate that. Why the heck are you playing dice games? I don't. <laughs> right. I well, mean, you know, people that, you know, they're like, Oh, you should at least have 2d10, you know, so you get the bell curve. And, fuck uh, the bell curve. It's not like you get a d20 and I get two d10s. We both have it. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just how it is. It's a world of magic. Things are going to be more powerful or less powerful all the time. Yeah, I, I, I like the swinginess of it. Everyone's got a chance, you know? I was thinking about trying D100 in our next game. Is it so, stop roll, has it stopped rolling yet? Well, no, <laughs> that, that's part of it, actually. It's, it's, so we're going to use um, six-inch uh, figures as models and then D100 is what we're going to go with. So I think it'd be kind of fun. fun it's just a golf ball with a number in each dimple. Well, th yeah, then we're going to only have our wizards only. And so and then we're going to take the, the 100 and throw it at each other. Whoever's action figure falls down first. Well, I'm taking Hulk because he's got the strongest base. I have Hulk as well. I have Red Hulk. Sorry. Okay, sorry, Mike. We're, uh, we're, we're talking nonsense. This is nonsense talk. Uh, you were having a very uh, well thought out response to these presents. No, it's not well thought. Uh, the only, uh, I, I, I so did, again, I agree with most. Uh, pretty much everything everyone else has said. Pretty much? What don't you agree with? <laughs> I, I caught myself because, yeah, that's what I'm, what I'm, what I'm lecturing. I got I to gotta have all these 
almost or pretty much, just yeah. to give myself an out. If there you is. never say the word always. So the, yeah, yeah. For the most part. But uh, another pro, I think, is the way you design your wizard. You get, you know, there's so many spells, and you get three from your field, your, your college, and then you get to pick one from the related, you know, the, the, the aligned ones. So even if you're playing two chronomancers, you could still make them different with the accessory spells you're getting. Yeah, you're right. And uh, so even if you're playing the same, you could still make them different. Even I if- I forgot about that. You're, we did do that. We had, I mean, yeah. it, I don't remember if we had a duplicate as the main one at all, but I forgot the, I had in my like spell deck, I didn't have only illusionist spells. I had a yeah. couple of like, you know, because, you know, at a certain point you want to do maybe, you know, all my spells were more about like, you know, trickery yeah. of sorts. I would like a fucking blast I could hit somebody with at some point, yeah. and none yeah. of those are going to be on the list. You know, weren't yeah. there some? Weren't there some that are out of game spells that you would roll in between yes. games? Yeah, I remember kind of liking that. Where it's like, yeah, yeah, I because pass they, this to get a level. they had they had variety like that. Like they were like I remember the sigilist had a spell they would cast after the game, and they'd get more experience. Yeah, yeah, that was the one. I remember. Was, I, uh, I would do those when I got home and just tell Mike what happened. Like, I got it. <laughs> went off on a hitch. Wink. Yeah. Oh, another another fucking crit. What do you know? I just learned twelve new spells. Cool. Oh, I found these this fucking treasure. Uh, it was it was in the bar uh, between games. Weird. So, okay. Uh, the progressions table is simple. It's you know every hundred XP you get a new level. I know a couple of people like when they first heard about it, they were like. Well, I'm a level set. They were thinking D and D. Like level five is a big is a big level for a wizard in D and D because that's when you get fireball. And uh, in this game, you know, you start at level zero. You go up, you know, level fifteen. You've got fifteen advances. Your you know some of your spells are a little better. Some of your stats are a little better. But it's not like massive increase in power. So, and again, it's a simple XP table. It's you know one hundred per level. Role playing fans like as they're foray into miniature gaming is this like a gateway game for them yeah I, I could definitely see that it's simple enough and again like 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 extreme said you're only focusing on one character really so that's your player character everyone else are your what is that called henchmen yeah when, well, when you ran the campaign you didn't do that though you can you talk about what you did in our campaign versus what the normies do because you took it to the next level yeah because because uh, some people were like, well, we kind of, you know, you, you, they wanted some level of progression for your 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 uh, your henchmen and that. So I just made a really simple system of if, you know, your dude gets experience points for fighting in the game, and if he does something of note, gets a treasure, kills someone, does something in the scenario, you get another XP. You get two at the most, and there was a... And thinking, uh, thinking like back, I don't... I don't think that's necessary. You know, at, yeah. when we first right. did, I'm like, oh, absolutely. But well, that, now that's, I, why, that's why I'm talking about it because. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was more trouble than it was worth. And yep. like after a while, you're, 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 you're XPing up your thug and it's like, it's really not. That I think much. I remember way back when, I don't remember if we were in like, we were in a store or something like a Games Plus or whatever. And we were talking about, you're like, yeah, I kind of have all this, you know, these ideas frustrated. I found a bunch of stuff online and I, in a weird way, I'm not going to say you had to sell me on that, but it was sort of, when you first tell somebody, well, only one guy builds up, and wouldn't it be cool if, and immediately my mind just went there. So we never really, at least I don't think we fully digested what the game could have been out of the box. And that yeah, is, yeah, yeah. worry about your wizard, your apprentice goes along with the ride, for the, for the ride, and then that way you don't have to worry so much about this guy died, this, you know, like you said, the thug builds up. I mean, I had people building up there like, I don't even give a shit about this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm sending him out to die. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace him with another soldier later on. But now I named him and he got something. So now I tried to protect him. And I didn't want to protect him. So I think you're right. I think you should yeah. play this game as is before deciding to add on stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Uh, anything else on any Any cons for you, Mike? Uh, I mean, again... Uh... I, I can see the setting, the, having the snow be not everyone's cup of tea, just like Archipelago, the, the Pirates isn't everyone's cup of tea. You don't have to play it that way, but it is part of the theme. So it, my, The reason why that other game wasn't my cup of tea is because I can't <clears throat> say that word. 
Archipelago. 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 Yeah. So immediately I'm like, I'm out. You just, the barrier, <laughs> barrier to entry. You have uh, been very exclusive and you're excluding stupid people. And I don't like it. <laughs> Frost grave. Frost grave. I ever <laughs> wanted to say those words. Bell shot. But they see right there though. <laughs> I don't like that. They well, know yeah, I, again. Again, uh, again, the swinginess. I, I think the biggest game breaker for some people would be the the D twenty swinginess. But again, it's not for power gamers. So yeah, this is for the right kind of person. This yeah. isn't a game for everybody. And like uh, like Byron said, uh, everyone. You know, even if you totally blow all your rolls and you totally fail the scenario, you still get stuff out of it. You know, and it's uh, not a wasted night. Yeah. And by having they adjust the points for the the players, so now, now there's some that are free. You they always it's the the journeyman rule. You yeah. you will you can always play your next game. You can always field some henchmen. Yeah. Well, what's cool about the free <laughs> one, those um just thugs or whatever they are, uh, you could spend all your money on a like two good specialist soldiers. And then you could fill up with those. And who really cares? Their stats aren't that much different than no, they're really not. Yeah. Or a warrior or something. So you can do that. And it's just it's just one more step to tailor your warband to what you want to do. Cool. Uh, as for me, obviously, like most of us said, but what I thought was cool was in the on the pro side of it all, I think back to when uh Valdrick, I know him as Mike, by the way. I don't want to behind the curtain too much. We played a variant of Warhammer Fantasy, The Storm of Chaos, which was all wizard focused. And it was crazy. We're knocking each other off these fulcrums, right? Yeah, fulcrums. And uh, I'm like, I'm gonna turn you into a toad. Well, I'm gonna like blow you off. This one is, what well, sounds weird. Uh, I'm going to whoosh, or hmm, whatever. Uh, it was a cool way to play that game. And, like, the real Warhammer players are like, oh, I didn't know people played that. <laughs> like, okay, asshole. Like, the fucking sign up to the tournaments down there. The fun kids are down here. You know we're fun? We got a fucking dial in the book. Like a fucking spinner that already broke. Uh, but this game brings some of that back to me because you have a wizard. You're trying to build up their book of spells and do cool shit and get treasure and achieve other objectives and try to, you know, try to not have your guys die. But if they do, that's right. You're going to bring some new ones in because you are the wizard and all centers around you. So I think it's great for that. Like Extreme said, it has a, a role-playing vibe for people who like miniature games that don't really like to play role-playing games. This is the game for you because that is your character. That's what you're doing there. And I think that that's a, a big part of it. So if you want to take it further with other rules, expansions, and all that, you can. You don't have to. You can play, like, hundreds of good games out of this book got to find the right people to play with i'm going to put that on a con because this isn't a game to go into your store and just you're going to find cool people if if you play 40k tournaments once a month at your store but you think i think this game is really cool i want to play frostgrave i don't know if you're going to find the right people to play from that group you might but you also might not and you're going to just waste your time making terrain, building warbands, coming up with other scenarios, the whole thing, because you find someone's like, wait a minute, what? why does your guy get the spells that do this? My guy can only do this? Like, yeah, because that's how the game works. And people are going to look for fairness. It's not a game of, for fairness. You're rolling a fucking D20. You know? <laughs> Mike, rolls, Mike roll a 19, I roll a 2. My guy's dead in one hit yep. from a shitty thug or henchman or whatever. That's just how it goes. It's, it has that uh, cinematic feel because crazy things will happen in this game. Be prepared for that. If you don't want that, you want a level of normalcy in your games, then it's probably not a good game for you. I mean, when we talk about Blood Bowl, risk management, people want to know, like, well, I want to do these things. And it's like, yeah, you, you want to have everything all set up. This is the opposite of that. Anything can happen. I could have a completely depleted war band. I got these journeymen film, film the ranks here. Crazy shit could happen. Still a D20, anything could happen. So I like that about the game, but that could be a con for someone else. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I think we covered the, the, the 
very little basics of the game. I don't, you know, it's not a how to play Frostgrave video, obviously. You can find those on, on, online, but the first edition ones will work for second edition. There's been some tweaking. Um, if you played the first and you want to check this one out, uh, you should, because it's not a very expensive buy-in, it's, you know, whatever, $30 book, and the spells you thought weren't good are now good. There's more scenarios. There's cleaned up fighting rules. There's cleaned up uh, shooting. The, the phases are a little word a little better, but for the most part, it's the same game. And that's why it's awesome because I would have given the same game, the same rating as well. The first game edition, because it's a great game there too. Um, really do have a look at those brown boxes because I'd say every single one I read was optional rule. Like, fuck yeah, we definitely have to do that. Like every single one. Whereas a lot of times, like, I mean, it's probably in there. So like Biron, you said, which ones are we using? Are we using this? But that's, you know, if you find a group of guys you're playing this with or girls or not I identifying, mm-hmm. uh, you will just say, hey, here's one for games played on small tables, two by two. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like every single brown box is a cool rule. So give it a try. If you think it's too much for somebody new, then don't use them. But then the next campaign, throw them all in, throw a few in. It's got all that and more. Uh, it's a great game. So that's all I have about it. I think we should move on to our ratings. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Most to least, most experience, the highest, the, the wizard that knows 50 spells at this point, I'm going to say is Mike because he ran our campaign. So he has to know more. You will be first, Valdrick. And oh, I, I totally forgot. Uh, two things I forgot. Uh, one of them, Extreme has a giveaway planned. That's right. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, I do have a giveaway you wanna, planned. You want to know what's crazy? I only remembered it because I remembered the other thing. Like one, <laughs> one forgotten thing created another forgotten thing. I wouldn't have remembered this thing unless I remembered the other thing, which we'll talk about. We're going to talk about how to win it. Do you have it to show off right now, Extreme? A teaser? I don't. I can get it if you want to talk about your other thing. And then okay. We'll come back well, you're going to be last to review, so go go get it. All right. Go extreme. Let's talk some major shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> did you see that shirt he was wearing? Oh God! Who the fuck would wear a Zlurkat shirt when they're on? Wearing the shirt of the show he's on. That's like oh, Seinfeld wearing don't a Seinfeld that. shirt while he's on Seinfeld. Don't be that guy. Don't wear. Don't the be shirt a Todd. Guy. Don't yeah. wear a Misfits shirt. To a Misfits. It's Alga. I know. You bought the fucking ticket, dude. There you go. Uh, I, was, I, still, I still will do that, though. Who cares? The other thing, we don't need a stream for it. Let's talk about the other thing real quick. Before we give our ratings, uh, Valdrick and I have had eight in a row matches of scores. Like, the same exact rate. And there was one, I think if you go like two before, there was a match up there. So nine total, but eight in a row. And your average is the same. The average is the same, but also the last eight has been the same score, eight in a row. This will be ninth. Um, I am going to – I should probably write mine down. I already know what you guys are going to (laughs) rate. I'm going to set up dice over here. We got it. Oh, so it is two. You said dice. Oh, Oh, you're going to write it written down, so it doesn't matter. No, I got a zero on on this one. (laughs) <laughs> it's, a, it's a D13, and I threw, I wrote in a zero. Uh, all right, Extreme, show off your giveaway. It's a copy of Cucumber Sandwich. A game about? The Game of the Year edition. What's it about? Uh, it's about growing cucumbers and seeing how quickly your cucumber can be the uh, largest size it can be. It's about really dick. cool uh, screw your neighbor type card game. It is I'm about dicks, American. yes. But... About cocks, dicks, penis, all that stuff. You know, it's a very adult themed game. Yeah. Good drink. Not about game. those fancy tea sandwiches in England. Yeah. There's uh, cool artwork in there. You know, there's like, uh, you know, penises drawn up as various, you know, people in your neighborhood. You know, doctor, policeman. Yeah. They are it's drawn. A- 
What extreme? Uh, the quote says, a moronic game created by imbeciles. So, I mean, Perfect. what more do you want? Yeah. yeah. This is a moronic show created by imbeciles, too. So, um, at the end of this episode, I'll tell you how you can win it. Uh, uh, so, Valdrick has the first rating. I have mine over here, so it's not the same. What is your rating? You want to do a, a Simo reveal? We can do that. Sure, why not? Says, I'll go second then. So, second is now first. Hold on. It's, it is two. One. Okay, we're going to go on. So, this one, is not my rating. This is my guess what your rating is. One, <laughs> two, three. One, two, three, go. go it is yeah. not on three and is not a, like a beat. One, two, three, two. Yeah. One. Here we go. This, this is it. This is not a test. It's not a drill. <laughs> this is the actual thing. Oh, I did have it reversed. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Okay. One, two, three, show them. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. So, four or five, it's a fantastic game. The point five, uh, any reason why you want, it wasn't a five? This will be a fun, quick discussion because it's a great game. We both agree on that. Why, why isn't it a five? Well, I mean, I can see how the cons would, you know, possibly be cons for some people. So, the, yeah. the, the game needs a little, uh, a little work on the organizer's part. Or, like Extreme said, the guy that says, oh, Bullet Soul was playing, man. Like, yeah, if only you decided to play, and then yeah. it, instead of saying, you know, what, you know, what can I do for my, what can my game store do for me? I'm going to do this for my game store. I'm going to say, I'm going to run Frostgrave. And if one person replies, I'm in, it's a start. I played a Necromunda campaign with two people before, you know, and then people saw us playing and doubled and, you know, that happens all the time. So yeah, start somewhere. This is not a game easy to just say off, off the shelf and I'm going to walk into a community. You won't have that. So I would agree. That's probably worth the minus 0.5. Yeah, you got to have a little bit of terrain and a little, you know, so like we were saying before, two, guys, or two people in a college dorm, unless they're using books as terrain, it's going to, you know. Because I, I mean, how would they even use books? They would just be I had all the terrain and I had buckets of it. Uh, Biron's going to make a, an OK Boomer joke. Go ahead. Yeah, it, would, it wouldn't even be books now. It's all e-readers. Yeah, you got them. These kids Fucking got them, man. And, and while you're at it, get off your lawn. Yeah, I agree. You know, you, you need some, there's some extra work that goes into this one. So you also need imagination too. You know, it's, it, it, you can buy stuff, figures for it, but it, it, this is a 40 K has how many novels and how many, like everything for years, right? This is like one page, like have some fun with it. So you got to have a little, you might not want that. Some people mm -hmm. might want more structure in their games. Um, you, you know, you can do whatever you want with this one. So uh, 4.5, 4. 4. 4.5. Oh, stream, sorry. For the fluff and background, they did release a book of short stories that was really cool. And Matt Warren. There was someone else who did that for their world, and those short stories were garbage. Who? Well, they, those were, uh, yeah. Those were free stories. They didn't pay the authors. <laughs> you don't want to name names? Mantic. Okay. <laughs> were those the writers or the the... I think there were fan submissions, weren't they? No, it was fan they're, they're, they're actually coming out with uh, full novels now. There's a Dreadball novel coming out. Ooh. I have to get that just because I'm curious how that would even work. Yeah. yeah. A, a Fantic Productions. Yeah. But yeah, there's Frostgrave has a collection of short stories, which are decent. Uh, Matt Ward wrote a, it's not quite a novel. It's a, it's novella, a novella, if you will. A novella. A novella. Yeah. So, which was which was better? I read it, so yeah. yeah there we go. Yeah. And if you read it, and you made it to the end, yeah. What happens? They you know, get some stuff. Yeah, I don't. Really, I, can't, I have no memory of. Will they or I won't they have sex? It. Okay. I didn't know. Was there a just if there was a love triangle in there? Just want to know yeah. if they eventually, you know, did that thing. Before this, you don't know. Sword fight! <laughs> so we have, uh, there's a great Tarantino clip. Look up Tarantino sword fight on YouTube. It's a fun one. 4.5 for Valdrick, 4.5 for me. Let's go to Marlon Barando. 
for his rating of this game? I'm going to actually um, embrace having empathy and look at the score from someone that's not me, your average skirmish game consumer. You don't, you don't have to. This is your score. You don't have I don't, to. Do and this is what I'm choosing to do with it. Okay, that, that's fine. That, that's totally fine. I'm going to give it a four. Wow. Oh. Because right. it's, it's very well crafted. It's not necessarily for me, but I did enjoy my time with it, and I would consider playing it again. You know, when we did Techno Bowl, you did the same approach. Yep. You, I'm maturing as a, as a critic. That's fantastic. It's, it's, not, it's one category here. Yeah. Actually, great. Uh, so we have a 4.5, 4.5 and a 4. Let's go down to the one known as Extreme. You also might know him as the other guy. He was called the other guy, not by me, by somebody on talk. Bloodbolt.com doesn't exist anymore. I like that main guy. I think I like the other guy. I don't remember what the quote was. Something like that. You're, he was your Gary Meyer. Yeah. He never tried to go solo, though. No. He thought okay. about it a few times. He thought about it, but he didn't pull the trigger on it. Uh, all right. So I'm going to give it a four. Ooh, very nice score. Easy to do the math on. I, I say, like yeah. I believe it is tied for number one spot with Relic Blade and Super Show. I think they're both four and a quarter. I don't think Super Show got that. Didn't I, didn't I tank it better than that? I think it did. <laughs> Shrimp can't uh, I can't confirm right now. Because he was I, on his phone. Yeah, I can look. We should raise money to get uh, – Get extreme a computer and camera so he he can have his phone ready. He's out of money. Uh, sort of money. Yeah, he just he just dropped some coin. That's true. Yeah, he just bought a house. Here we go. Slurpcast TV. It's in my Google Drive, and my folder on my phone called Cloud. It's in the cloud. Uh, top scores. Where's I was on the right. These don't work well. Why don't these work well on the phone? By the way, I'm I'm pinching. I'm squeezing. I'm Zoom. squeaking. 4.25 Relic Blade, 4.25 Techno Ball. Uh, that's wow. Uh, if you so were to ask me at the beginning of all our reviews, what would be the top two rated, I would not have guessed. No, me neither. Uh, Super Show got a four. Pretty good. And, uh, I thought Blitz Bowl was a four. Blitz Bowl was a three and three quarters. So Relic Blade and Techno Ball and now Frostgrave. All tied for the number one spot in these Lurpy ratings. You can see on the screen, probably now, probably earlier, probably later. I don't know when this producer fuck will actually follow orders and have some level of uh, order here. He's like, you'll tell me what to do. You're not my dad. Like a lot of that kind of shit. You're not my real dad. Yeah, it's fun. What a great score. This is Frostgrave. Awesome game. We're going to have more games we cover. Uh, we're about, what, five months of doing this show. So we're not even halfway done yet. Wait till our one year anniversary show. Ratings of the ratings of the ratings. That's like a list of lists. I love that. By the way, if you love us, subscribe. Tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell a friend of me. Tell the guy at the game store that brings the fucking kimchi and is eating and stinks up the joint. Tell him, tell him. Follow at Zlurpcast on Facebook, Instagram. <coughs> Join the discussion, Zlurpcast discussion. I know Extreme. I'm getting to that. Frostgrave is a great game. Now let's do the thing. So we're giving away this game about peepees. And the way to win this game is we are going to do a Zlurp Nation email for this one. So when you get the email, reply something so we know. I want this game about dicks. Give me that dicks. How about and, a trivia question uh, that if you watch this episode, you would know. What are the, oh. top, two, what are the top two rated games according to Zlurpcast TV? That's, that's a good question. One. That's a good one because now you have to watch more than just this end part. Mm -hmm. Like somebody could like scroll, like just kind of like wait till it shows it on the screen. We got to watch the before yeah. part. Mm -hmm. You got to get the pre-com too. There's three, I mean? three top games now. That's why I said it's a trick question. Oh. <laughs> hey, why is it trick? Because he said two. one of the two. I said two. It is three. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so what are the three now, games? Or do you want the answer to be it's a trick question? 
Ah, oh, fuck it. Say the names of the games. Say the names, please, of those games, because we think they're great games. Say the name. Yeah. That's how you win. And if you're not in the Slurp Nation, well, now's a great fucking time to sign up, because in the description below, there's a link. Boop, boop. Click that. Give me your name. Give me your social. <laughs> give me the blood type, whatever. All that stuff. You get the list. And we're going to send this email out. So this episode comes out on Sunday, the 27th. I believe. Yes. Yep. The email will go out on Monday, the day after, Monday the 28th. So if you watch this game, you got a whole day to sign up. Email goes out on Monday. We'll draw the winner on Tuesday. Boom, boom, boom. That's how we roll. If you're chosen, randomly, of course, Extreme will mail it to you. He will mail it, send it to through the mail. If we still have mail by then, I don't know. What's going to happen by, by Tuesday? No, we're before November. We should be fine. Yeah, we should be good. So, win cucumber sandwich, sandwich, uh, sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. And if you live in Sandwich, Illinois, unfortunately, you're not eligible because you can't. Sorry, Tennessee. <laughs> right. You're too connected to Sandwich already. I'm sorry. Uh, that's it for us. We should say our byes. Brought to you by Nuffles. Bet you can't just roll a one.